The 17 inch MacBook Pro has a cult following, but unfortunately Apple killed it off right when they introduced the best unibody MacBook Pro ever made. In 2012, there were a ton of upgrades, but sadly they never came to the 17 inch, which meant that the final version is this one that has a, a horrible graphics card that fails all the time. So it was a little bit depressing that Apple left the 17 inch MacBook Pro in such a sorry state. That is until today, because now there's this. This is a mid 2012 17 inch MacBook Pro. It's just so weird to not only see Ventura on a 17 inch, but to see a mid 2012 model identifier. That's crazy. This incredible one of a kind creation is the brainchild of DOS Dude One. You might recognize him from the Mac OS patchers that I have used on this channel many, many times. Chances are you probably have too. Well, today he came by to show me how this thing came to be. I mean, obviously you moved the CPU, but the chipset as well? So yes, the chipset and CPU, but that is just based on the serial number, which right. is just an arbitrary one I put in, uh, as if it were a Hackintosh, basically. It's kind of part Hackintosh. Yes. Part Macintosh. You've got a custom bootloader. Custom firmware. Custom firmware. Mm -hmm. And you're patching it to Ventura. Yes. My theory was I'll just take the chipsets from a real 2012, mm. reball them, solder them on the board, and then uh, use the firmware from the 2012 and it'll just work. Well, of course that wasn't the case because if I look at it closer, uh, a lot of the PCH IO is, is used for completely different things on the 2012. So the firmware is taking that into account. So I was like, well, now what the heck am I gonna do? So I custom designed a port for this specific upgraded machine. And after a lot of iterations, Took me quite a while. I got it working with every piece of hardware fully functional in the system. This is the laptop that Apple never made. They never made a 17 inch for 2012. And I think that's a real shame. I wanna see what this thing looks like in, in person. Oh yeah, absolutely. It looks pretty normal in here. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, those are the original VRAM chips yes. that are no longer doing anything. No longer doing anything, but I left them on there. <laughs> the like the mismatched RAM. Like only that combination would work with core boot. It was so really? strange. What if you what? switch no. the order? The blue one has to be on the top. That one's 1600, the other is 1066. Wait, they're different speeds? Yes. If I put what? two of the same speed in there, it wouldn't work. That's weird. I'm seeing my first thing that I shouldn't be seeing. Yes. I see a lot of empty pads <laughs> that are not usually empty. Yes because of course you gotta take off the old failed AMD GPU, but you can't put an Nvidia GPU on those same pads. Now the reason I did that was because the Ivy Bridge CPU is actually thinner than the Sandy Bridge one. Is it? And the GPU is the same thickness as the Sandy Bridge one. So with the GPU chipset huh. on there, the heatsink would actually sit at a slight angle. What else on here did you modify? So the other thing that's modified is the chip under here, which is the PCH. Um, it was originally, of course, a six series chipset, an HM65, mm. which is not compatible with any Ivy Bridge QM series chips, which is what these use. So I had to replace the PCH with the Ivy Bridge PCH, the seven series. So then it fully works properly with the Ivy Bridge CPU. So instead yeah. of hacking up a machine and having this really janky tape together mess. Yeah. You swap the chips. Swap the chips plus some custom firmware. And you've got yourself a pretty much perfect mid 2012 17 inch MacBook Pro. Unbelievable. So one interesting note is the Intel HD graphics 4000 that's in the CPU in this machine is actually better than the Radeon HD 6770M that this machine had, the dedicated video card. Even though that was a, I think it was a one gig card. Yeah, it was a one gig card. But it was card. just that bad. It was horrible. <laughs> I mean, performance wise and reliability wise, they're horrible. So my question actually is, this display isn't the same resolution and scaling as the factory display would have been. Like even with the high res option, I think that was 1680 by 1050. Yeah. 
and this is 1200p. It just reads the EDID straight off the screen and says that's the resolution and that's what it outputs. Simple as that. Apple is famous for being really, really inflexible, yeah. but at the same time, they do stuff like that where like the drivers are all there and half the time you don't even have to change anything. Like with iMacs, you can upgrade the CPUs even to SKUs that Apple didn't sell. And it's just like, oh yeah, that's fine. Yep. That's fine with me. I put a Core i9 in a 21.5 inch, or a 9900. As long as the power supply can can handle it, they don't they don't care. So the software was by far mm. the most time consuming part. That, that checks out. Um, <laughs> the actual upgrade took me about three to four hours to do all the reballing and installing of the chipsets. Oh wow. That's um, and then uh, the software, I probably spent about four or five days worth of solid labor on. <laughs> I don't even know if this is gonna translate and be as crazy as this is to me, to some people. So obviously the scope of this project is insane. We're talking about taking a logic board from a 2011 Mac and switching the chipset and CPU to a completely different Mac that never existed on this logic board. So it got me wondering, how much functionality is there still on this machine? So, are these USB 2.0 ports? Yes. Right, so theoretically, could you, I mean, I guess you'd have to like desolder them, but could you put USB 3 in here? So the PCH, those ports are actually on a USB 3.0 bus, but they're oh. through an onboard USB 2.0 hub. Oh. Um, in theory, you could, but you'd have to route like six extra wires per port. So compared to the 2012 with the ports here, MagSafe, same. Yep. Ethernet, same. Yep. Firewire, Thunderbolt, all the same. Um, obviously two USBs are now three. Mm -hmm. And the express card slot, does that work too? Yes, it does. Fully works. How? It was basically as simple as saying, this PCI Express port needs to be enabled on the PCH, setting it accordingly in core boot, and it just works as a PCI Express port. That's so, truly mind boggling. So in, in pretty much every way, except for these, these USB ports, which are 2.0. Yes. It, it works completely like a normal 2012. Yes, exactly. With integrated graphics. Right. Graphics, obviously the 2011 has the infamous, notorious AMD 6000 series. Yep. Which is really unfortunate because when Apple discontinued the 17 inch, they left it on a pretty bad note, which was the early and the late 2011s that all catastrophically fail. And even if they didn't, are so much worse than the metal supported NVIDIA GPUs. But you can't exactly put an NVIDIA laptop GPU on a board that had an AMD one. That's that's a bit far. No, the pinout and like BGA footprint are completely different. Look at that, Cinebench 17-inch MacBook Pro Core i7-3720QM. That's quite an unusual sight. Let's see, does it run at normal speeds? They should have made this thing! I know they should have. Ugh, it can't have been difficult. And like, this is this is 12 years old, look at those bezels. I know. Like, the, the Retina had thicker bezels. At least on the top. I think, I the, think sides. the sides as well. We're settling this debate once and for all. 13.49 millimeters. No, oh. it's definitely smaller. Oh, 11.79. Look at that, there the 17 inch was more advanced than the Retina. That's, there's your confirmation. All right, so here's a regular 15 inch, same CPU as the 17. And it does it does look like the 17 is a little bit slower. They're both plugged in. Okay. It's probably just some core boot tweaking or something that I would have to do. Oh, the core wattage is 41. This is only 22. There you go. Yeah, so it's only running at half power. Right. Which is why it's running so cool, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's only it's only at 87, and I don't think this thing would even kick the fans in until it's in the 90s. This one on the other hand is at 100. Because it's Intel, and that's how they run. <laughs> It works. <laughs> I've poked holes in your 17 inch MacBook. Yes, <laughs> so thank you so much for showing me this incredible machine. This is the thing that I always wanted. I was so sad that Apple never made it, but 
I guess they didn't need to because you were here and you just made it yourself. The closest thing you can get to an actual 20, 2012 17 inch. Links to the full video of creating this beautiful monstrosity and all of Das Dude's projects are linked down below. It was really great to meet you in person. I've been using your patches for years. Oh yeah. So I, people are gonna like to have a face to the name. Thanks a bunch for having me out. And this was of a course. fun time, so. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to both of our channels. And I will see, well, we will see you in the next one.